John here, talking about the hull and the Minkowski transformations in OpenSCAD. Let's say you have a cylinder, diameter 20, height equals 10. If you can type, <laughs> if I could spell, <laughs> there we go, cylinder, okay. Diameter of 20 and the height of 10. All right. Let's make it a little bit lower. All right. So you got like a hockey puck like thing sitting there. All right. And then we create a second cylinder. Let's make a copy of this first one. Paste it. Let's translate the second one over to the right by, mm, let's say, 30 units. So I have two cylinders. All right. These are two separate objects in this same space. They're not connected or anything. Two separate statements, right? They both end in a semicolon. This one's just moved over. This one's left at the origin. I can do this. Hull. Now you create this set of child objects inside these curly braces. So it says, look, I want to create a hull. That can, that, that, that can contain these objects defined down here. We already know what we've got. If we just see those two objects, say put a hull around it, it does this. So it's essentially like you put the whole thing in shrink wrap or something, and you said, what is the minimum size volume that can contain all of the things inside, all of these children objects inside? Let's see what happens. We can put more things in here if we want to. A copy and a paste. Oops, I spaced it in there. Let's say this one is over 30 in X and up here 30 in Y. So now I have three children objects. There's one here, here, and there. If I comment out the hull like this, you can see them all. OpenSCAD doesn't care that you have what's called an, a, an anonymous uh, scope here. Now you have a hull. It adds this. This is a good time, perhaps, I could show you some special debugging features that OpenSCAD includes. If I put a pound sign in front of one of these statements, it says, look, highlight this one object here in the context of everything else that's going on on the screen. So now you can see that this particular translated cylinder is right here. So if you don't know which one that is, you can put a little pound sign in front of it and say, hey, highlight this guy. That one's doing the guy down there. There's some other ones you can also use. If I put a percent sign in front of it, it's a similar thing. It says, look, show me where this cylinder is, but otherwise don't use it for anything like you normally would. So you've essentially commented this line of code out, but you said, show it to me as a reference. Sometimes you can put down in complicated designs other objects just so that they're there for reference, like size and location and things like that. Uh, you can also do a um, uh, what do you say, an exclamation point in front of it, although in this particular context it's kind of strange. What this really means to open SCAD is says, show me this thing and this thing only and don't show me anything else or do anything else with any other part of the program that it's executing. So this essentially comments out everything except this one object right here. Again, these are really handy for debugging when you don't know what's going on. You can also use them on composite objects if you really want to. I could say, look, show me the entire hull, please. All right. Of course, if you had another hull or the hull was used inside greater, uh, more complex objects than this particular one here, that could come in handy just like it did when we said, show me this one cylinder down here in the context of this one hull. All right. Fine. Well, that's all there really is to a hull. Obviously, if you could create, let's say, a sphere whose diameter, or rather radius, is 50 and two cylinders, now it'll create a, uh, well, you can actually see it bulging out on the side over here. I made this sphere kind of big. Let's make this more like 10, radius of 10. Now what you have is a sphere here and two cylinders over here. Again, this, this, this notion of kind of like, what would happen if you put it in some shrink wrap? That's exactly what you get when you create a hull. The minimum sized volume that can contain 
all of the objects that are defined as child objects of the hull. All right, that's what a hull is. A Minkowski is a little bit different and has a similar feel to it. Let's first put some objects down. Let's create a cube that is, let's say, 100 in X, 100 in Y, and 10 in the Z. Now I commented out the Minkowski here, so we can just see our cube, and we can see where it is at the origin. It's in the first octant, all right? Now a Minkowski is sort of like a hull, and that it says, I'm going to do something using these child objects down here. The first object says, this is the path, the volume, that I will use to apply to all the subsequent objects in the set of all the children things down here. So let's say I put a sphere in here with a diameter of 10. All right. Now I'm going to use the exclamation point that you just learned about in the hull and says just show me that sphere and don't do anything else. There's my sphere, okay? And this is nice, even in the context of a Minkowski or a hull or something else. You tell everyone to shut up so that I can see my one sphere here, okay? Now I'm going to show me again the, the cube, right? Now that remember the sphere is right here, right in the origin. The origin of the sphere is in the center of the sphere. A Minkowski says, move around this object down here such that its origin moves about on the surface of this first object up here. And then I essentially create a hull uh, after moving it in all possible locations on this surface. So that it'll move the sphere up here and around this upper surface and it'll move it around this lower surface to all possible locations and then it will put a hull around it. So you end up with something that looks like this. As you can see, the sphere that I divined was really in this corner right here and, and if I were to create a sphere down here and a sphere up here, a sphere over there and another one down here and likewise in these four corners over here as well, if I can zoom around, uh, spin around and see all these, you could then put a hull around a whole, all these eight spheres. It would give you the same shape. But the Minkowski sum is the same thing and much easier to describe like this. You could Google this and uh, see uh, other examples. I'll try to add a link to a YouTube video that I found earlier that shows the way that the tool calculates the Minkowski sum and a 2D animation, which is pretty useful. So if you're having a hard time visualizing this, uh, that might help you as well.